So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk a little bit about unit three. Let's look at unit three for a second. And this is unit three. And because we've been working on so many different things in this class at the same time, you've basically done most of this already. I'm going to focus on two areas that we have not done. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about this area right here and truth tables and short circuit evaluation if there's time. And then the next time we're together, we'll talk about De Morgan's laws. So those are the two different areas. The rest of it we've mostly covered, but I'll review with you. The next class you have with me, there will not be a quiz because you just had a test, but then after that, there'll be the next set of quizzes starting on Unit 3. The, unit 3 is very short, so there'll only be a couple of quizzes before the test. So we want to talk today a little bit about truth tables. And to see what that means, let's just start one one. Let's say I had an expression like this. And you can see that this is a Boolean expression. Normally, if these parentheses were not here, which of these operators would get done first? Would it be the OR or the AND? Mr. Sneed, the AND would get done first, but I've overridden the built-in PEMDAS of the machine with these parentheses, so you can see that the OR is going to get done before the AND. And I'm going to show you now a mathematical way of analyzing this Boolean expression. And you might want to analyze it for several reasons. One of the reasons you might want to analyze it is sometimes you have two Boolean expressions. And from looking at it, it's not clear if, they mean this, if they're exactly the same. So if you write a truth table for them, and then write a truth table for the other one, and you can compare the truth tables, you can see if the expressions represent equivalent expressions. But we're just going to start with one truth table right now, and that's going to be for this expression. What I want you to do now is turn to your partner and describe to them, in this Boolean expression, how many inputs are there and how many outputs are there. What I want to know is how many things are inputs and how many outputs or answers uh, are created here. What do you think? Mr. Garofalo, how many inputs are, do you see, sir? There are three inputs. What are they? X, Y, and Z. And how many outputs are there, sir? One. There's one output. What will be the value of that output? There are two possibilities. What will it be? Uh, true, or false. true or false. We're all good with that? Mm -hmm. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table. And my table is going to have four columns, three for the inputs and one for the output. I'm going to label the columns x, y, Z, and the other one I can label anything. I can maybe just call it uh, output or something like that. Now, what I want to do is I want to fill this out with trues and falses. But historically, people don't like to use t's and f's because they're a little hard to read. They prefer to fill out the truth table using something else. Who can tell me what values do they typically put in the truth tables? Yes, miss? Zero and one. Zero and one. So we'll just assume here that zero, that zero means false and one means true. In some programming languages like C, which is where Java comes from, this is actually true inside the machine, that false is set to a value of zero and true is set to a value of one. Java is not like that. It will not let you swap between these two. But for our logical purposes, we're going to sort of assume that. Now, if we have three inputs, x, y, and z, how many rows of possibilities can we have for zeros and ones here for the three inputs? Who can tell me? How many different possibilities are there? Here's a possibility. Here's a possibility. How many total possibilities can I have? Let me try it another way. Let's say there was one input, and that input could be either true or false. How many rows would there be in the truth table? Two. So this one, one variable would yield two rows. Now let's say that there were two variables. How many different possibilities are there for zeros and ones in the two variables? Yes, sir. 
four. Here they are. Look. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. You see that? So this is going to be four rows. And Sawyer is sticking to the idea that it, now if it, there's three, there must be six. But I say no. Three variables. How many rows? Yes, Miss Kaylin? Eight. Now, when you write the truth table, you should write the, the eight possibilities. By the way, if there were four inputs, how many rows would there be in the truth table? Yes, sir? Sixteen. 16. Are you getting the idea? Now, we could, in theory, write the rows any which way we want, but no. We want to write it a very specific way so that the reader will recognize that way and be used to that way. What do you think would be a good way to order the eight rows? Assuming this is now binary. You see, it's like binary, right? Yes, sir? In like binary order. In no. binary order. That's right. Very good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write them in binary order. So the first row is going to be 0, 0, 0. The last row is going to be 1, 1, 1. And now I would like you to take out a piece of paper and fill in the missing six rows in order if you can. Mr. Menez, did you take computer science principles, sir? Yes. Sir, can you tell me what would be the next sequence of bits here? Uh, zero, zero, one. Keep going, sir. If you're not sure, you can see that this column, which is the rightmost column, switches every time. The middle column switches every two. And the column to the farthest left switches every four. If we had four inputs here and there was another variable here, the leftmost column would switch every eight. I'll, we'll do another example with four inputs later. Today, we're just going to keep it simple here like this. Now, what we want to do is we want to write what the outputs are going to be. Looking at this expression right here, what can we say about the outputs when the z value is false? So there's an and here, miss. So if this part is false of the and, what will the whole expression be? It will be false. So in terms of filling this table out, we're going to just kind of cheat a little bit and put in zeros for all the ones where the z is already zero. So we'll just put in here, and here, and here, and here. That'll make our work a little bit faster. What can we say if they're both zero? Then th the whole thing will be false, right? So that will be this one. Are there any other cases in here where x and y are both zero? And now we have to go and fill in these other ones here. What is the case when x is 0, y is, y is 1, and z is 1? What's the output going to be for that one? Ms. Rhea? One. That's going to be a 1. And how about if x and y are both 1? Oh, sorry, uh, x is 1. Um, y is 0, and z is 1. What do we get for that one? Miss Tamara? That's also a 1. And what do we get if they're all 1? Mr. Degouge? 1. OK. So this is a truth table for this expression. It's not really part of the class or the course, but I want to explain to you something very weird about this truth table. It's used by logicians that study Aristotelian logic. It's used by computer scientists. It's used by mathematicians. It's used by electrical engineers for building circuits. It's really weird that this thing, this tool, crosses so many STEM disciplines, and actually philosophy also. That's kind of weird. And by the way, there was a guy named George Boole who figured out those relationships, and that's why it's called Boolean logic. All right, back to here. This truth table uniquely defines this expression. 
If I had another expression and I wanted to know if it was equivalent to this expression, I would look at the truth table there and the truth table here, and the only way those two expressions could be equivalent is if the two truth tables were identical. That's the only way two logical expressions can be equivalent if their truth tables match.